You're listening to KKCR, Kingwood Cowboy Country Radio, showcasing the roots of classic and vintage country, cowboy, and western music. Don't Let the Stars Get in Your Eyes was written by a disc jockey, musician, and songwriter from Dublin, Texas named Winston L. Moore, whose stage name was Slim Willett. The song was first recorded by Slim Willett and the Brush Cutters, then by Ray Price, Keats McDonald, and many others. The best-selling performance was a pop version recorded by Perry Como with the Ramblers on November 4, 1952. The song became very popular in England, Argentina, Australia, and Germany. Louise Rowe from Midland, Texas, toured with Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys in 1953. Louise was singing in a Battle of the Bands in Dallas in 1952. After Louise Rowe sang a song, she watched in amazement as the legendary fiddler Bob Wills walked up to her. She said, Bob Wills hired me as a singer right on a bandstand. She was the only female musician in the history of Bob Wills' band and became known as a Texas playboy who wore a dress. Here is Louise Rowe with Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys. Don't let the stars get in your eyes. Bill Choate's going to start this all, but this is the tune where we always star the little man back here. Bless his heart, Billy Bowman. Watch him start turning red. Uh-oh. This, yeah, this is the one where Billy Bowman got that high singing way on up there. You know, Bob, I was feeling sorry for myself, but not anymore. No, no, start feeling sorry yeah, for Billy. He's the boy in the spot. Here it is, friends. Faded love. Henry Whittier was born on April 6, 1892. He was an early country and folk music recording artist. Principally a guitarist, he also played banjo, fiddle, piano, and harmonica. 
Henry Whittier was the first to record Weeping Willow Tree on December 10, 1923. It was released in 1924. The original songwriter is unknown, so it is listed as traditional in music archives. No online recording of this song by Henry Whittier is available. Bluegrass performer Ralph Stanley teamed up with Joan Baez on this duo of Weeping Willow Tree on track number eight on the album Clinch Mountain Sweethearts. Kentucky is a waltz written in 1946 by bluegrass musician Bill Monroe and recorded by his band the Bluegrass Boys for Columbia Records on September 16, 1946. The song has since been recorded by many artists including Elvis Presley. In 2003 the song was chosen to be added to the Library of Congress National Recording Registry. Blue Moon is the official bluegrass song of Kentucky. Oh, 
shine Shine on the one that's gone And said goodbye The song Green Green Grass of Home was written by Claude Curley Putman Jr. and first recorded by singer Johnny Darrell. It's a country song originally made popular by Porter Wagoner in 1965 when it reached number four on the country charts. That same year it was sung by Bobby Bear and later Tom Jones in 1966 when it became a worldwide number one hit. The setting is a man returns to his childhood home. It seems that this is his first visit home since leaving in his youth. When he steps down from the train, his parents are there to greet him, and his beloved Mary comes running to join them. All is welcome and peace. All come to meet him with arms reaching, smiling sweetly. Yet the music and the words are full of foreboding and strongly suggestive of a cause of mourning. The song, Hey Joe, is a 1953 song written by Boodle Bryant. It was recorded by Carl Smith for Columbia Records on May 19, 1953, and spent eight weeks at number one on the U.S. country music chart. This marked Boodle O'Brien's first number one record. He later wrote songs with his wife, Felice, for the Everly Brothers and many other artists. Here's Carl Smith with Hey Joe. I want you to give a nice, good welcome to Carl Smith. Carl, come in here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. It's nice to be with you on the program. Thank uh, you. It's who's an honor. the Who's the guitar man with you? The guitar man? Yes. You mean the one that's coming in to sit down now? Yes. I better not call him what I did on rehearsal. Do that same thing. Same thing. Yes, sir. Well, is. he's got another name. He's known as Cousin Jody for the time. <laughs> But no. he's got him some new teeth. <laughs> I ain't gonna say the rest <laughs> of it. He's been with me since 1951, and his name is Johnny Cybert. Johnny Cybert. I'd like to keep him about one more week. How's that? Well, he, he does a real fine job, and so does Cousin Jody. I notice his biscuit board is not as, as flat as Cousin Jody. No, he borrowed that and shot Jackson. Good enough for me. It's the same price. That's fine. What are you gonna sing, Carl? Hey! Joe. Good one, boy. Now, which find that pearly girl? Which get that jolly dolly? Hydrate that dish I would close my 
Some Train Blues, written by George Clinton Shug Fisher, was first recorded on June 29, 1941, by Hank Penny and his Radio Cowboys. It's a 
bringing my baby, bringing her back home to me. Elizabeth uh, Cotton, C-O-T-T-E-N, was a black American blues and folk musician, singer, and songwriter. A self-taught left-handed guitarist, Cotton developed her own original style. She played a guitar strung for a right-handed player, but played it upside down as she was left-handed. This position required her to play the bass lines with her fingers and the melody with her thumb. Her signature alternating bass style became known as cotton picking. Although self-taught, she became proficient at playing the instrument. By her early teens, she was writing her own songs, one of which, Freight Train, became one of her most recognized. She wrote the song in remembrance of a nearby train that she could hear from her childhood home. Here's Mr. Guitar Chet Atkins with an instrumental of Elizabeth Cotton's Freight Train. Larry W. Jones is the author of over 7,000 songs, the world's largest collection of song lyrics written by an individual songwriter. Musicians and recording artists may freely edit and arrange his lyrics to fit their music and singing. To view the entire collection, as well as his public radio exchange programs, 19 volumes of lyrics publications, music videos, and a documentary of the Great American Horse Drive, visit kingwoodcowboy.com. That's cowboy with a K.